Hi, uh, this is the recording for the October 2017 uh, uh, high school implementation uh, meeting. This goes over all the same material that we covered in the meeting last week and uh, will allow you to catch up if you have missed anything. So let's get started. I'm going to move into, first of all, where you can find this information uh, on our website. Just a reminder, most of you know where this is, so if you go to, <clears throat> excuse me, if you go to departments from the district webpage, move to assessments, this will bring you to our assessment oh, homepage <clears throat> under high schools. You click on that, that will get you uh, to a login. All right, sorry, just need to log in. Get you to a login page, and then you will have the calendar that is um, available for everyone for the assessment. It allows to, you to see what windows are open. Um, and so if we look uh, forward to uh, the 6th of December, for instance, you'll see that we have a high school assessment meeting in the morning. Um, you click on that. It will say copy to my calendar. You can move this then to your calendar automatically. You can do that for all the meetings throughout the year. They are on the calendar right now. And so they will be available for you. Also at the bottom of this page, you will find uh, not only the uh, action planning calendars, which are available to each of you, and I send those out, which I will be sending out shortly for the next one, but also for the coordinator meetings. By clicking on October 2017 meeting, you'll get to the page that has all the information for this meeting that we're going to go over. Number one, the agendas. Number two, any of the handouts that we have <clears throat> that um, you may want to take a look at. So this time there were two handouts, one for the ACT um, EL L changes, as well as what's new with access. And finally, then uh, we have the PowerPoint and you'll have the webinar of this particular meeting. So that's where you can find these resources. Let's take a look at the uh, uh, PowerPoint for this particular meeting and we'll get going. All right, this meeting um, was, took place in, originally took place on October 18th and uh, we welcomed everyone. The agenda for today is we're going to review any changes to access testing for this particular year. We're gonna talk about changes in the ACT as well as the uh, work keys. Changes again for the civics test and what that means. We'll then move into some shorter updates. Uh, we'll talk a little bit briefly about the Apple uh, assessment, which will be at all high schools at some point this year. DCYA and the climate survey. Aspire, we really won't spend much time about, about uh, talking about it, but um, in fact, that's probably about it for this meeting. However, just a review as well of the opt-out procedures. <clears throat> All right, let's begin with access. So in your list of handouts, you have a digital version of this particular um, flyer. <clears throat> and in that, you will find these hy hyperlinked um, connections to other documents, other sites, et cetera. They're all very useful. This is the first time that we've ever had anything from WIDA that explains how to get students ready for this testing. So it includes um, a short video, it includes some guidance of how to handle talking with students about the assessment and some sample items. As far as test preparation, if students have already taken the access, really there is no need to, to take the preparation. Um, they know what the questions look like, et cetera. If a student is new to the country, uh, then that would be time that I would certainly use to uh, uh, spend some time with talking to them about what is the test, what is access, how does it run, give them sample questions, et cetera. As far as ordering test materials, you will not have to do that. We'll take care of all of that. There will be a few paper copies um, available if for some chance a student has never used a computer um, which is an entire pos entirely possible, <clears throat> um, we will provide you with a uh, hand, uh, uh, the writing portion to be, uh, instead of keyboarded, uh, written out by hand. We'll talk uh, more detail about all of these things next month. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. The timeline for 27, 
2017, 18 is as follows. We're already through the October 27th uh, deadline or pretty close. And that really is the preparation. Most importantly, it's updating the OASIS for those students who have IEPs. And uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. After that, we're going to focus on professional development and building schedules. And finally, the test window opens December 5th and closes on February 2nd. So here are a couple things through the 27th, I should say. Uh, first of all, as of October 15th, all PSTs were reminded from student services that they need to ensure that, that students who have IEPs have their supports and accommodations loaded into OASIS. What we're going to do with that is we're going to be identifying those students who normally take the, or should be taking the alternate access. That probably hasn't changed for most students. If they took the alternate access last year, they will likely take the alternate access this year. What is a change would be for students who are, have new IEPs or who are new to the country and have never had an IEP. Um, we'll also spend a little bit of time in a moment talking about what the, uh, the supports will look like as far as a review of who gets what. Please remember, if a student shows up on your doorstep 2nd of January, um, that we need to go through the process to screen them, first of all, always, with the new WIDA screener. It used to be the WAPT that has been replaced by the WIDA screener. Regardless of when they show up, this is the first step. Upon determination of whether someone is an English learner or not, <clears throat> then we move into uh, whether or not we use access. So right now, thinking about, you should be thinking about location, who are the staff involved, and what technology is needed. So, Regarding the staff, professional development this year is slightly different since this is the third year that we're going to be involved using the access test in its current format. Um, DPI is not requiring everyone to uh, recertify this year. So if the staff have already done access, they do not, repeat, do not have to recertify. I strongly urge you to have your staff review the uh, information on the assessment. They don't have to recertify. Those that do have to gain certification are those who have never given the access before. That could be uh, someone who's new to the state, it could be someone new to the profession, et cetera. Also a reminder that this professional development, this certification involves several quizzes and should take uh, anywhere between one and two hours. You will have, um, as the coordinator for access, you will have access to um, the AMS um, software, and you should be able to get that, and we'll be getting that in the next couple of weeks. As of the 31st of, this, of October, DPI will be uploading the students who are already in, um, in IC. So that uh, you should be double checking to make sure every student is there, that every, all the information is correct. They will be placed in predetermined sessions. We'll talk about that briefly, but that's coming up. Uh, also, you should be contacting your building coordinator, tech coordinator, or your tech support, excuse me, <clears throat> informing them when are you going to give the first test and what location so that they can be there on site to ensure smooth implementation on the first day of testing. Also, during the coming time, so, so in the next week, moving into December, right before the testing, um, those who, uh, staff members who are giving the access for the very first time need to complete the professional development and um, get a certificate of completion. They do not have to print this out. They do not have to send it to me. Um, the only time they need to print it out is if you want a copy. You need to make sure that they are certified to test the, give the access testing. Also during this time window, uh, we are going to uh, print the tickets for each of the schools and send them out. You will get four tickets, one for each session. The sessions are listening, reading, which are first, followed by the writing and speaking, which are the second set of tests. We'll uh, work to differentiate these tickets by color as well. A reminder that all students are pre-populated into sessions. You don't have to put anyone into a session. 
that they are placed there by grade. Now, here is where the uh, information about what supports a student gets, what accommodations a student gets um, is critical. We'll talk about the list that we're going to send you, but when a student does not have um, the correct accommodations or supports, here is what has to happen. First of all, there's typically a, some panic that we get a call and say, wait a minute, this student needs to have these accommodations. Why don't they have them? Followed by, we'll take care of it. And what that means is the student will have to be removed from the session. If they have already started testing, they will lose their test. So this is always critical that this is done before students actually begin testing. So students will be pulled from the test session. Behind the scenes, we'll check the boxes that'll say, yes, they get this and this and this accommodation or support. Then they are placed back into sessions and they must have a new ticket. The old ticket still works, which is the problem. If they're put into the session and use the old ticket, they will get the old settings. They will not get the accommodations that they're supposed to get. So the new ticket will recognize the fact that they now have specific accommodations. In that case, you are going to be asked to print the, the new ticket because that is a much uh, quicker way of doing it than having us print it, put it in the mail, and send it to you. So just keep that in mind. That's one of the reasons why uh, we try and get the student accommodations done early um, and correctly so that we don't have to change the sessions and do the whole printing new ticket thing. Also, uh, this is the time when you should have staff reviewing the questions or some of the sample questions as well as with students. Keep in mind that when setting this up, that the each test domain, each subtest, so listening, reading, speaking, and writing, those four are requiring, required to be completed on the same day that they are started. Does not mean you can't take a break, but it does mean that if you start listening in the morning and something happens, student goes home and doesn't get a chance to complete it, then that test needs to be uh, term finished and we may or may not be able to get them back into that. So uh, typically you will uh, start with the listening and or reading, either one, get that completed, and then you may be able to complete the speaking and the writing on the same day. It may have to wait until the second day. Something else to think about, you will need headsets. So you need to have the headphones plus the mouthpiece or the microphone. And I will be sending out information this week uh, regarding what uh, a recommendation is if you need to order some more. <clears throat> During the testing window, which starts on December 5th, you will get tickets, you'll have those all in place ahead of time. The students will be taking the listening and reading portion. And then after that, there will be a, a report approximately one hour later, after they finish those two sessions, there'll be a report that indicates what tier they are going to be for the speaking and writing groups, tier A or tier B, C. You can combine tiers uh, A and B, C for the speaking groups. There's no problem there. Um, keep in mind that the groups should be small, and there are several reasons for that. Technology has improved so that we are able to now test larger groups, but it's very time consuming to um, proctor this particular one. I'm suggesting that we don't add, have groups larger than six. You can do it, but you need to have more supporting staff available to make sure everybody gets going. The other issue is that depending on the room size and the uh, acoustics in there may be very disorientating, very disorienting for um, students to be listening to all those other people in the room speaking while they're trying to also speak. As far as the writing is concerned, you may mix tiers A and B, C. <clears throat> uh, it says not for writing, but that's not exactly true. And we'll talk about that in just a moment, why that is. Again, headphones are necessary. So here's the approximate timing. Approximately 40 minutes for listening, approximately 35 for reading. Speaking is the only one in which there is a specific time limit. All students finish before the 30 minutes, but 
the idea is that if they can't accomplish the questions within 30 minutes, um, then they, they are really struggling and we don't need to extend that test any longer. Here's the issue with the writing tiers. Writing tier A has a, it's approximately 45 minutes. Writing tier B, C, is approximately 60 minutes. So it's much, it's a little bit more involved. Putting all those students together in the room works, except that writing, those students who are taking writing tier A will be finished first. Uh, it's not fair to those students who are taking BC if those students, once taking A, get up and leave, make all kinds of noise that's distracting. So my suggestion is that they have something to read, something to do while they are sitting there waiting for their peers to finish component or writing tier BC. Or you just keep them in separate testing set, settings. There are samples um, available. We'll have those updated on our website. When a student logs in, here's what they're going to see. They will see three choices. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at the access for L's. And notice that underneath there, there is a practice test. This will get some, them some um, uh, sample questions to do that are, may or may not be appropriate for their level, but at least they're able to see what the situation looks like. There's also a test demo that's available for staff to take a look at as well, as well as students. All right, if you have questions about access, please feel free to email either Sarah Walner or myself, and we will make sure that we get back to you with that. I'm gonna spend more time on access details next month in our November meeting. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at uh, ACT and work keys, some of the changes, some of the information that you need to know. Test dates for 2018, the standard time uh, test for the ACT is, is Tuesday, February 27th, followed by the accommodations, which run from the 27th, that Tuesday, through March 13th. If a student misses on the 27th and is um, taking the uh, regular uh, standard ACT, the makeup date is March 20th. And if I check the schedule correctly, I believe that's the Tuesday before spring break. Work keys. The standard work keys dates are February 28th or March 21st or April 4th. Now, last year we tried for the first time uh, going on the second date, which this year is March 21st, and it seemed to generally, with, without, uh, there were some problems, um, generally worked okay. This year, however, March 21st is a no test date per board policy. So we're either going to test on February 28th, which is what La Follette will do because of the exam schedule that they have at the end of the quarter, and or uh, April 4th, which is a much later date, so Wednesday after spring break. Work keys accommodation window, those students who have accommodations or supports for work keys will be testing, they need to test between February 28th and March 14th. Now, it's likely that the students will have accommodations for both ACT and for work keys. In that case, students must complete the ACT first and then move on to work keys during that window. So if you take a look on the left-hand side, you'll see that the accommodated window is the 27th through the 13th. Students will finish up their ACT whenever they do, but then they can move right into the work keys uh, in, in that uh, work keys window. A new item for this year, there will be no more college, non-college reportable tests. So what happened in the past was that if a student had no uh, did, did not get accepted for ACT approved accommodations, they could take a, an accommodated test that was for non-college reportable uh, status. That will not be the case this year. Students will either have ACT accommodations that are, have been approved by ACT, or they will be taking the standard test in standard time without any other supports or accommodations. So those are the two choices. You have accommodations or you don't. Also new this year, 
is English language learners, in order to receive their supports, they will have to have uh, go through a process that involves the TAA software, and they must also get approval from ACT. What kinds of supports are available? Um, <clears throat> timing code six, which is a one and a half time uh, extension, extended time for the entire test. Use of approved word-to-word -word dictionaries. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Separate small group settings. And then translated, the directions uh, and appropriate comments are translated into 12 different languages. There will not be any DVDs or CDs uh, reading the directions in another language to students. It will be printed. There will be specific um, assessment uh, uh, ACT tests that will come with students' names, um, not attached to it, but you will have to line them up. So you need to know who gets what support, and if there are 12 different languages, you will need to know who gets what language. The approved word-to-word -word dictionary um, is something that we are, uh, I'm kind of struggling with because most students, I would imagine, are not using paper copies of uh, dictionaries. Uh, However, they may. Now the question is, who provides those dictionaries? If a dictionary is a student dictionary, they're entirely welcome to use it, provided it has the following conditions. There's no writing in it. There's no highlighting in it. Nothing is marked up in any way, shape, or form. If there is one of those conditions, they may not use that particular dictionary. It also must be on the approved list of dictionaries um, from ACT. Now, question comes, what happens if they write in their dictionary? That is not going to be allowed, uh, an allowable um, dictionary to be used. So it's my suggestion that as a, as a uh, school, you provide um, this, uh, and a, a copy, a clean copy of the word to word dictionary. Uh, the window to begin to submit your requests for uh, both students with IEPs, IEPs and 504 accommodations and for ELL supports begins on November 6th and runs through January 12th. Both of these systems will be using the Test Accessibility and Accommodation System, the TAA. Please don't wait until December or January to begin this process because you now have many more students who will be asking for and needing access to supports and accommodations that require the system. All right, uh, also a reminder that Madison Metro will not be supporting transportation this year. Um, we worked with yellow buses last year. I'm going to work with the transportation um, coordinator and again, take a look at providing yellow, uh, yellow buses for you. There will be fewer this year because we had many buses that had one or two students. So we're gonna work at combining um, routes and runs <clears throat> for that particular day, which is February 27th. All right, here's some specifics for work keys. The test sub names, uh, excuse me, sub test names have been changed. You can see them here, workplace documents used to be um, the reading uh, for information, uh, graphic literacy used to be the uh, locating information and applied math is still the same as applied mathematics. They've lengthened each of the subtests. So it now is 40, excuse me, 55 minutes instead of 45 minutes. So that's a half hour longer testing total for the three subtests. If you need to have the National Career Readiness Certificates, the NCRC, they are available, please let me know. The accommodation and supported materials for those students who have IEPs, 504s, or ELLs are not ordered through the TAA like they are for the ACT. They, in fact, are ordered through the Pearson Access Next website. There's a very short window for that, January 10th through January 17th. So as we get closer, we'll talk more specifically about that particular um, assessment and what its needs are. Okay, here are a couple other things. The, a version of work keys in Spanish is available. It is translated from English into Spanish rather than being written completely in Spanish 
initially. So it might be a little rough for many students. Also, we're working out how is it that we recommend students to take the Spanish version of work keys versus the English um, version of work keys. So that is a work in progress. We're trying to identify a, a work stream, a, a way of determining that, and we'll be sharing that with you. Again, you order all these materials through Access, uh, Pearson Access Next, and there is that short window. Let's take a look at some of the changes and updates for the civics test. Act 59, which this year is the act that was the budget, included a line item that said that in order to pass the high school civics test, students must now score a 65 instead of a 60 um, in order to be considered passing. The effective date of this is September 23rd, 2017, the day after the legislation was signed into law. Essentially, that was all the information that came from that. And so we've been trying to get a uh, figure out what exactly that means. The change has been made as, as shortly after September 23rd, the change has been made to Qualtrics. Um, so currently, any student who's taking the civics test will be um, expected to get the 65, and that will we'll tell you that you have passed. However, DPI, DPI is um, waiting to see if there's any changes in the legislation to allow students to be grandfathered in. So those students who last year may have been freshmen, who passed with a 61, 62, et cetera, um, may, right, as it stands right now, be required to retake the test in order to get a 65. However, in the case of when that, that assessment was given, it was a 60 in order to pass. So hopefully those students will be grandfathered in. I'm working with DPI to follow this and to make sure that students get what they need what they deserve for already having done this. As it has been in the past, just a couple of reminders, if a student transfers into the district from another school in Wisconsin, please send us the information on their civics test, uh, whether or not they met the requirement and what date it was and at what school, so that we can put that into uh, IC and it will appear on their transcripts. Uh, again, we will go through a process of finding students to um, test, uh, which ones have not passed, et cetera. And uh, there is an ad hoc template that you will have, you have available. You can do makeups anytime. The test window is open uh, throughout the year, summer, through breaks, et cetera. And uh, hopefully we made it through the first group who just graduated uh, doing okay. Uh, if you have any feedback, please let me know. How can we make this process better? Okay, new assessment this year. Just as ACCESS is a test for English language proficiency, APPLE is a test for another language proficiency. As we're moving more and more students to uh, have the seal of biliteracy available for um, as part of their diploma, we need to have some kind of an assessment that measures how proficient they are in a second or third language. Currently, um, this is in use for DLI students at La Follette. Um, it will be available to world language seniors um, who are taking a level three or above class. I believe it's only going to be for Spanish this year, but we'll see as we get closer, um, and it will be available in the spring. It is a, an assessment that is similar to ACCESS, so it requires computer time. Uh, there is a writing portion that also requires students to understand how the keyboard changes. So you change, on a Chromebook, you change the keyboard through the settings in the lower right-hand side, and uh, you are able to change it from the standard US to, uh, to for instance, a Spanish language keyboard. There are four components to this as well. And so when students are, are finished with this, which takes approximately four hours, uh, the results will be returned to them within three weeks. Finally, let's get to what's new and updated. Dane County Youth Assessment, which happens every three years, once every three years, is occurring again in January, February. We're focusing on a fe February timeline. 
The, there have been many updates to the questions. There's a full depression screener now built into it. There are questions regarding AODA um, and immigration concerns. Um, this is critical for us to participate in and get full participation in. Again, the goal is 100% of students uh, taking the DCYA. Um, what is this used for? Uh, this is used for grants not only in the school district, but in the city and in the county. Uh, this data is, is used by a number of people in a number of different settings that all work to directly support our students. So keep that in mind as we think about DCYA coming up in February. This is also paired with the climate survey, which all students uh, in high school are asked to participate in. That will be coming up as well in February. Uh, Aspire has the same has a similar window. We'll talk more about that later. And finally, if you have an opt out <clears throat> student who opts out of any of the assessments, it needs to be in writing. It could be an email. So either way, either one of those are fine. Please make sure that you send a copy to Sarah Walner or myself so that we can record that opt out. If you have any questions. Please make sure you uh, connect with any either one of us. Here is our contact information, and uh, and I hope to uh, hear from you soon if you do have any questions. So that's it for today. Please call 